Welcome to Chasing the Wind. I'm Pastor Mark with another episode and thought for you to consider today about God being an all-consuming fire. Let's talk about consumerism. Uh, if uh, Andy and I were just having a little thing, you'll hear a little bit about this on counterculture in one of these episodes coming up. But I want to talk to you about it because I'm on a roll this morning. Somebody stop me. Anyway, on uh, consumerism and contributorism in the church and the overabundance of one and the lacking of the other. So here's the deal. We talk about consumerism and, you know, the, the joke has been, oh, won't be long that, uh, you know, now that 4th of July is over, uh, Walmart's going to be putting out uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas stuff any day now. Uh, and it's all about the consumerism, but we're guilty of making it because we're consumers. Um, and Andy and I were talking about the idea that the church, um, you know, when we started the church growth movement, when it was started about 35 years ago, it all became about seeker sensitive stuff. But what we didn't realize is that we shifted the, the which seekers we were after. But all we did was create and expose, in my opinion, the consumerism uh, that already existed in the church. I don't know how many times probably people say, well, that's my pew. They're sitting in my pew. Or, uh, you know, I'm the piano player here. I've always played the piano. That's my piano band. Wait a minute. When did you consume that? When did it become yours? And uh, so there, there becomes this situation. Now we have people and we are in a consumeristic society. Dana Douglas was a retired elder in my church, pastor in my church. It's going to be with the Lord. But Dana used to say that the church's job, and specifically the board's job of the church, who represents the, the leadership of the church, is to change the culture, not to let the culture change the church. But we have let the culture change the church because now we have a lot of consumer mindsets in our churches. And what I mean by that is, is, we want things our way, when we want it, how we want it. And if we don't, we're taking our toys and going home. Pastor Mark, just speaking the truth here, this ain't, it ain't, it ought not to be that way, as, as the old timers would say. It ain't, ought not to be that way. We have more consumers. Here's what I want. I just want to come in. Just feed me, Pastor, as one pastor used to call him spiritual pork. Well, just give me another mouthful, Pastor. Oh, yeah, I'm full and waddling out of church today. Boy, I got fed today. Three helpings I went back for. Yeah, you know, what are you going to do with it? You're going to go home and puke it out probably, okay? You're so sick. You're going to need in You got indigestion. You need a little, little, you need a little Prilosec or something like that to help you with the heartburn. But your heart's not burning for the right reason. Our heart needs to be consumed by the love of God and by the reverence of God. That is what the fear of God is, is being burned up. That's just the Holy Spirit telling me that right now. We are being consumed. That is the fear of God, is when we are so overwhelmed and consumed by God. And so here's what I think we need to switch. There's a couple things that need to happen in the church, and it's going to start with you who are watching this this morning, today, whenever you're watching. I don't care. You're, you need, if you are a consumer, well, I want what I want when I want it. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that to some degree. Until the point when, when it's about just what you want and it's not about, well, this is, this is what's going to help me. But here's the thing. We need to be consumed by God. And that is where Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24 says, uh, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Oh, jealous. We're not supposed to be jealous. Jealous in the fact that he loves you so much he doesn't want to share you with anybody. That is a beautiful thing. Jealousy can lead to bad things, but there is a piece of jealousy that says, um, I, I love you so much that I don't want you going and running off. That, that I, yeah, I, I want you. That's a, jealousy shows that you are, you are wanted and, and loved in, in reality, unless it's in a very unhealthy sense. But God is a consuming fire, we're told. And we should be consumed by him. We should be consumed by God. That, that our, you know, our, the chaff of sin in our lives should be burned up. 
so that what is left is pure holiness. Fire, fire purifies. Fire purifies. And when God consumes us, when we let, this is good, by the way, if, if we let the fire of God's holiness burn the chaff of sin away, we will be made pure and holy as he is holy. And he says, without holiness, no one saves the Lord. Sanctify yourselves. How do we do that? By surrendering ourselves, letting God burn us up. May God himself sanctify you entirely. That God takes and gets rid of the stuff that is not like Jesus and fills you up with the stuff that is like Jesus. And fills you with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is fire. Remember, tongues of fire came down upon them. And fire consumes. When you think about Elijah and when he was uh, taking on the prophets of Baal, the fire of God is a consuming fire. It will take that which is unholy and burn it up and it will purify the rest of us to make us holy. And when we shift from being consuming, we need to consume God is what we need to consume. And we need to come to church with this idea, God consume me. Consume me. Let me be caught up in you today. Not caught up in my desires and my plans and my will, but let me be caught up in you. That I fall to my face. Because there will come a day that we are told in Philippians that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we, the sooner we do that and get that through our, our heads and our minds, the better we are. Because when we are consumed by God and we are consuming God, not just our own selfish desires, we will then become contributors. So wind chasers, I'm going to leave it right there because I'm giving you a lot to chew on, give you something to think about. So think about it. Till next time, I'm Pastor Mark. Grace and peace.